I always love being an 80s baby. I'm a native of Hawaii, but raised in Jersey City, a.k.a. Chilton. Now, Sharia was my government, but that was short-lived when my mom's nicknamed me Raya. I was so hip-hop. But hip-hop, man, it seemed to be inherent. My pops was in a group called Double X Posse, and they song went number one. Not gonna be able to do it. Definitely a hip-hop classic. As a shorty, I was all around the city trying to get involved in anything that allowed me to express myself creatively. I'm talking talent shows, fashion shows, hair shows, you name it. And of course, everything was for free. But it never mattered because it was not about the bread. It was about the high I got when I stepped out on that stage. That's when I felt most alive. I looked up to so many artists like Salt and Pepper, TLC, Aaliyah, Missy, Mary, Lil' Kim, Biggie, Wu-Tang, and Janet. Man, I thought I was Janet Jackson. I would record every Janet video and force my family to come over and just watch me perform. It was clear I was a performer, and the stage, well, that was my home. So I began to dabble a little bit more in dance, and I knew it would be risky, but it was worth the risk coming straight from the hood, no technical training. Yeah, it would be tough, but I had something that no amount of years of training could teach, and that was soul. I remember somebody saying, when you have it, you just do. And that message was true, cause I went on to work with artists like Diddy, A.T.s, Jay-Z, Sierra, The Dream, Rihanna, and great choreographers like Lori Ann Gibson, Hi-Hat, Fatima, Jamaica, and Tanisha Scott. Little did I know, the best was still yet to come. Let's just fast forward a little bit. From the time me and Missy linked up, it was like a perfect match. I needed a mentor, and she was the ideal fit. Being an icon in the game, she has so much wisdom. She let me know what needed to be done, how it needed to be done, and the amount of hard work I had to do. But from the door, she also let me know. If you're working with me, we working towards greatness. No in-between straight like that. And that was a challenge I was ready to take. I was ready to step out, ready for the world, and most importantly, ready to be Banji. And being Banji is being authentic and never jeopardizing your individuality. And that's what I am. But y'all could call me Banji Ray. It's funny because I can remember a record exec saying, all you got to do is show a little more skin, maybe put on some high heels, and sell a little more sex, and then get a weave. What? A weave? A word? How the hell was that being Banji? This was me in these baggy clothes with these sneakers and this blue Gumby. And what was wrong with that? The fact that I was being unique or the fact that I was expressing my individuality? Which one? Because I thought that's what made us cool. But needless to say, I hardly took his advice because I knew that there were people in this world that would appreciate the fact that I was just an individual and didn't want to just fit in. So, that's why I created this Banji movement. For those kids who aren't afraid to express themselves and won't apologize for doing just that. Yep, here and I roll with a crew of chicks who represent our banji And whenever we roll out, we showing out. Whether it's me and my bamboo earrings, at least two pair, or my homies and labels from head to toe, or my bourgeois banji sipping on a teeny, we all a part of the same movement, and that's the Banji movement. So if you're trying to be down, all you got to do is be yourself. Simple, right? And that's what makes you Banji certified. So go ahead. Dare to be different. Dare to be fearless. Dare to be Banji. I did.